If I were to win a Grand Slam, I'd definitely been practicing my like freak out pose at the end. She's very physical, she's very powerful, I would, and, and mentally I think she's close to Serena. One. She's so strong. And uh, the power and the strength and the core, the legs, all come into play. And put that on top of her athleticism, she's a champion. As she's evolved in the sport, her passion, her love for the game, her love for her competition has grown in a really healthy way. So that's been exciting. For you, I've really kind of pegged her for the past year as like the, the one player who has um, potential to not only be a great tennis player and to have like deals within tennis, but to really kind of transcend tennis at some point. Right now I'm just at a point where I'm, I'm only 18 and I'm like kind of living like the best life ever, so I'm pretty happy with that. 18-year-old American tennis player Sloane Stevens is a rising star of the women's game and the youngest player in the top 100. We can do it all over there if you like. Already one of the best athletes on the WTA Tour, the teenager is an all-court player whose power, speed and finesse has drawn comparisons with her idol, Serena Williams. To find out more about her, Transworld Sport met up with Sloan recently in Los Angeles, where she lives and trains. The daughter of a former NFL player and a champion college swimmer, Sloan excelled at a whole host of sports growing up but she was only introduced to tennis relatively late on in her childhood. I think I was about nine, and we lived across the street from a country club, and I don't really think that I liked tennis, but it was just something to do, and then the coach that I had was, like, really goofy and funny, so, I mean, I don't know what it was. It was, we were members at the club, so it was easy to, like, go and sneak ice cream and, like, stuff like that, so it was just something to do, like, during the summer, and then I guess I was kind of good, and my mom was like, oh, you should play, and then I started taking lessons, and then it escalated into this whole big thing. Sloan rose quickly through the junior ranks, winning countless titles. In 2010, she won three Junior Grand Slam doubles championships at Wimbledon, Roland Garros and Flushing Meadows. The American made the switch to the WTA Tour on a full-time basis 12 months ago, aged 17. In her rookie year, the youngster broke into the top 100 and made the third round of the US Open before a wrist injury, unfortunately, curtailed a very promising debut season. The move from the juniors to the pros was hard because you kind of got to grow up fast and a lot of traveling and things like that. But this year was a good learning experience for me and I had a lot of fun, so that's good. And then so for 2012, I'm just really looking forward to it. I'm excited because now this is like my second go around. Like I know the tournament, know the tournament directors and I know people. So it should be fun and it should be easier like, you know, getting around and doing things. So I'm pretty excited. Sloan is coached by former ATP Tour professional Roger Smith. The 47-year-old is no stranger to young talent, having previously worked for the United States Tennis Association in their player development department. Well, I'm very excited. Obviously, I've, I've parted with the USTA to take this project on. I wouldn't have done that if I didn't believe in this, this young girl becoming a champion. What do I mean by champion? I think she can be win hopefully one of the slams at some point. I mean, she's very good on all surface, which is a great thing. So I'm very optimistic about that, that she will get one uh, at some point in her career. And, and hopefully, once she gets one, she can build on top of that. She's at her best when she, when she plays fast, when, when she hits the ball, accelerates on every shot. Um, but at the same time, not looking to hit winners, but looking to wear her opponents down. That's when she particularly has her best results. When she's not on tour, Sloan to usually to trains at UCLA for around five hours a day, 90 minutes of which are devoted to fitness work with her trainer, Maurice Wilson. This is why my butt's getting bigger. I know, that's a good thing. That's where all your power comes from, the thighs and the butt. But it just looks bigger. <laughs> but it's stronger. That means I have a better chance of getting a boyfriend if it's bigger. No, because that, that's more of a chance of me blocking. <laughs> I already told you that. 
in, out, in, out. Faster, Sloan. Come on. Faster. Come on. Good. Good. Come on. Good. 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 Excellent. Very good. Maurice has spent the majority of his career working alongside American football players, and he believes that pound for pound, Sloan is one of the strongest athletes that he's ever come across. You know, working with Sloan is really good because you know what? She has a great attitude about it. She wants to be the best, she wants to be number one, and she works hard at it. So whatever I ask her to do, she does it. And she's so athletic, it's really nice working with her. So her being a natural athlete, I just, I'm just able to bring out even more of the best of her refined qualities that she already has, and which is good. And the fact that she's younger, she's gonna be even stronger, so her body hasn't even peaked yet. So that's the good thing, she's a phenomenal athlete. Sloan lives with her mom, Sybil, and younger brother in the Bel Air suburb of L.A. They're a close-knit family who've had to deal with a lot of difficulties in recent years. Firstly, when she was 14, Sloan's stepfather died from cancer. Soon after, her biological father, John Stevens, a former NFL running back for the New England Patriots, was killed in a car crash. Dealing with so much tragedy early on was really, really tough. Um, the loss of her stepfather was especially difficult because he was passionate about tennis. He really loved tennis. So, you know, when, when he passed away after a two and a half year battle with cancer, it really took a lot from Sloan. I mean, she lost that flame, you know, for, for sport, for tennis, and she didn't want to play for about six months. So that was really tough. We just sort of let her, um, you know, experience her grief. But a year later, she lost her biological father um, in a car accident. And, and that was, again, just so traumatizing. But um, she used sport at that point. She used her tennis to really help her uh, stay afloat. And she relied on tennis at that point to keep her strong and, and uh, encouraged and positive about life. Sloan's certainly positive about life today. Her bubbly nature, along with her talent, makes her an agent's dream. We're going to see the wizard. Now we're going to see my agent. And, well, two of my agents. And hopefully they'll have some goodies for me, like always. Coming up through the junior tennis ranks, Sloan quickly came to the attention of all the leading sports management companies, and there was a fierce battle to sign her. She eventually chose to be represented by agent John Tobias and his team, whose office is a short drive from where Sloan lives. Hi. How are you? Uh, how are you doing? Hi, Sloan. Hi, John. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, good to see you. Have a seat. Amongst the other players that John represents are Karolina Wojniacki, Victoria Azarenka, Andy Roddick, and Marty Fish. Sloan has something that a lot of, most of the tennis players, a lot of the players that we represent don't have. And that's, you know, just the ability to go and interact with different people. And, and she's very engaging. So she can walk into a room and really command a presence in the room. And that's very helpful when you're dealing with sponsors and making appearances and shooting commercials or, you know, the sort of work that we do in sports marketing. Being based in Los Angeles, home to Hollywood and a countless number of celebrities, Sloan is well placed to take advantage of the star quality that's marked her out from an early age. The 18-year-old has already secured a number of endorsement deals, and there are more in the pipeline. L.A. has been home to Sloan and her family for more than three years, having moved here from Florida to work with her coach, Roger. She's settled in well to the pace of life here. I do see a lot of famous people all the time, and I see Serena at UCLA all the time. Um, what other famous people do we see? I saw Holly Berry one time at Boa, the restaurant. 
thought was pretty cool. I love Hollywood because it is so bright and there's so many people and it's fun and it has a Hollywood song. When Transworld Sport was in Tinseltown, Sloan was keen to show us around. Oh my god, it was Hollywood land, you guys. Now it's only Hollywood, so the land is out. Well, Sloan is really outgoing, very energetic, always has been since she was little. She's very friendly and sweet, she's got a big heart. So she's, she's a, you know, she's a well-rounded, I think she's a well-rounded person, but an extrovert for sure. During last year's US Open, Sloan spent a large part of her post-game press conferences talking about her love of nail polish. On the day that we spent with her, the teenager couldn't resist taking us to her favorite salon to get her nails done. Sloan brought along her brother and his friend and insisted that they get a manicure and pedicure too. So I always have to get a different color and I have a thing with like having clean feet and clean hands so this is why I bring them because they need to be clean and they're little boys and they run around and like do gross stuff so for them to be clean is nice. I think you would look good with the color that I have, Jordan. They wouldn't make fun of you. And plus, you're not in school, so no one would see you. Next week, the first Grand Slam of the year, the Australian Open, gets underway in Melbourne. It'll be Sloan's first major tournament since Flushing Meadows, and she can't wait to finally get back into action after her long injury layoff. Sloan will be aiming to improve on her third round US Open performance. And with the right draw, coupled with some good fortune along the way, the American may even reach the last 16. This will be my first Grand Slam that I didn't have to qualify for, or didn't get a wild card for, that I'm directly in. So I'm pretty excited. Like, I mean, I was excited when the, I knew I was going to get in, but you know, there's always that, uh, like I could get bumped or something. So. I'm really, one of the rankings, when the, the entry list came out, I was like, yes, I'm in. So I'm really excited. The women's game is as wide open as it's been for a long time. There's no dominant player, a fact underlined by there being four different major winners last year. In addition, women's tennis stateside is going through something of a slump at the moment. The Williams sisters appear to be past their imperious best, and in 2011, the US were relegated from the top group of the Fed Cup for the first time in their history. The time is ripe for a young talent to emerge from these shores. And in Sloan Stevens, the future looks bright for American tennis. I know her goal is to be number one in the world at some, someday, so uh, that's a good thing. And I feel very confident about it. I, I, uh, it's been enjoyable, the process. It's not easy, obviously, developing a champion. But uh, again, it's a project that I believe in this girl and, and it's been fun. Yeah, definitely a lot of people hype it up now because I'm young and you know there's not a lot of Americans and things like that. But it's always fun because when articles come out and things like that, people always put my Twitter name at the bottom so I get more followers. So I think that's like the best part. When I get more followers, that, that really makes me happy. So everyone follow me. Sloan Stevens, remember the name. <laughs>